What do you think truly makes the West uneasy? Not a power that rose under ideal conditions, but a nation squeezed by sanctions, yet still strongly pushes forward. That nation is Russia. While advanced technologies like jet aircraft engines were long believed to be the exclusive domain of the West Moscow, is quietly dismantling that assumption with an unexpected name, PD-26. A domestically developed engine born in isolation is now aimed squarely at the long-standing dominance of the Western giants. So what exactly is PD-26? Why could it become a serious challenge to the West? Let's dive into the story. The PD-26 engine is far more than a technical project. It is Russia's boldest statement yet in its push for aviation self-reliance. Developed by the United Engine Corporation, UEC, specifically through its subsidiary UEC Aviadvigatel in Perm PD-26, is a high-bypass turbofan delivering around 26 tons of thrust. That figure alone reveals its ambition. This engine is aimed squarely at the next generation of wide-body passenger aircraft, a market long dominated by the West. This engine is being designed as a versatile power plant suitable not only for wide-body airliners, but also for freighters and heavy military transport aircraft. With an estimated bypass ratio of 8.5, 9.0, and a fan diameter approaching 3 meters, the engine seeks to combine high thrust with improved fuel efficiency and long-range performance. Its targeted cruise stage specific fuel consumption of a specific fuel consumption of about 0.53 to 0. 54 represents a 15 to 20 percent improvement over older Russian engines such as the PS90A, a significant leap by any standard. Crucially, PD-26 is not being built from scratch. It draws heavily on technologies proven in the smaller PD-14 already certified and flying on the MC-21, while also incorporating large-scale solutions developed for the PD-35 program. These include advanced composite materials, single crystal turbine blades capable of withstanding extreme temperatures, and a modular gas generator core designed to enable scalable production across multiple thrust classes. As of December 2025, this engine remains in the pre-prototype phase. Ground testing is expected around 2027-2028, with a first flight planned for the late 2020s. Yet even before it leaves the ground, the engine is already raising an uncomfortable question for the aviation world. Is Western dominance in large turbofan engines truly unassailable? The story of the PD-26 did not begin in 2025. It had been quietly taking shape nearly a decade earlier. The origins of this engine lie in Russia's efforts to rebuild its aviation engine industry following the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. During the Soviet era, Russia, through the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic, produced world-class engines such as the D-30 and AL-31, securing a leading position in global competition. However, the economic turmoil of the 1990s weakened the industry, forcing Moscow to rely on foreign partners from Ukraine's motor sitch for helicopter engines to Western suppliers such as Pratt & Whitney and Safran for civil aviation components. By the mid-2000s, as oil revenues surged, the Kremlin launched a revival under the state conglomerate Rostec, which now includes the United Engine Corporation, aiming to develop super-heavy thrust engines capable of competing on the global market. In this context, the PD-35 program was launched around 2015-2016 as part of the Federal High Thrust Aircraft Engine Development Program. With a target thrust of 35 to 38 tons, the PD-35 was expected to power the Russia-China Widebody Project, CR-929, as well as future heavy transport aircraft, including a successor to the IL-96. The engine integrates more than 20 advanced technologies ranging from ceramic matrix composite combustion chambers to modern digital control systems. A full-scale test prototype was conducted in 2023, 20 during which the engine core produced a powerful sound on the test bench demonstrating the effectiveness of the technology and opening the door for downsized versions. However, the PD-35 did not progress smoothly. The breakdown of the CR929 collaboration project forced the Kremlin to shift focus to other domestic projects. At this point, Russian engineers began considering more practical solutions leveraging proven technologies from the PD-35. The PD-26 engine emerged in 2025 as a downsized yet practical derivative of the PD-35. With a thrust of around 26 tons, it uses a tested gas generator core combined with a smaller fan and a low-pressure turbine targeting the wide-body and heavy transport aircraft segment. Its modular design, similar to that of the PD-14, helps reduce research and development costs by 40 to 50 percent and shortens certification time paving the way for mass production. Official announcements about the PD-26 were made by First Deputy Prime Minister Denis Manturov in August 2025 
and just a month later President Vladimir Putin personally instructed the acceleration of development and mass production during a meeting in Samara. He called it Russia's first high-thrust aircraft engine with entirely new thrust capabilities emphasizing its effectiveness for both civil and military applications. Work on the core prototype began roughly between 2021 and 2023 based on PD-14 testing experience, but full assembly will depend on funding expected in 2026. In reality, the story of this engine is a journey of persistence and adaptation. During 2015-2016, when the PD-35 program was just getting started, Russian engineers laid the technological foundation that would later save the program in a smaller, more practical form. By 2018, the PD-14 engine developed for the narrow-body MC-21 had received type certification. It not only served regional airlines, but also became a living laboratory for the PD-26, from the combustion chamber and single crystal turbine blades to the composite fan, all of which could be scaled up or down for the new engine line. In 2023, the PD-35 reached a key milestone. Its gas generator core successfully operated on a test bench in Perm, producing a powerful sound and demonstrating that the new technologies functioned effectively at 35 tons of thrust. This success opened the door to scaling the design down to create a more affordable and practical version, the PD-26. In August 2025, the engine was officially unveiled with a target thrust of 26 tons. It was not intended to replace the cancelled CR-929, but rather to serve domestic heavy transport aircraft and future four-engine widebodies. One month later, in September 20, 2025, President Vladimir Putin ordered an acceleration of development turning this engine from a derivative project into a cornerstone of Russia's technological sovereignty. But the final chapter has yet to be written. By the late 2020s, a test IL-76 is expected to take off from Ramenskoy or Zhukovsky equipped with four engines, three older PS-90 engines on three pylons, and a new PD-26 on the fourth pylon. If everything goes according to plan, the engine is expected to receive certification around 2032-2035, ready to power aircraft that Russia currently must produce domestically. By the way, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. We know you're going to love what's coming next. However, the rapid acceleration of the PD-26 program cannot be understood without examining the political forces driving it. At its core lies Russia's doctrine of import substitution, a policy that has evolved from an economic preference into a strategic necessity. This doctrine became a central pillar of Russian policy after 2014 when the annexation of Crimea triggered the first wave of Western sanctions. Those early sanctions targeted dual-use technologies including aircraft engines forcing Russia to reduce its dependence on Ukrainian suppliers such as Motorsich, which provided helicopter engines and on Western partners for civil aviation components. By 2017, import substitution was formally embedded into the defense and aviation sectors through the federal program development of the aviation industry, later extended to 2030. The program set ambitious targets achieving 85 to 100 percent localization across key aviation systems by 2025. In hindsight, even Russian officials would later concede that these goals were unrealistic. The situation escalated dramatically after 2022. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine triggered the most extensive sanctions regime in modern industrial history. The United States, the European Union, and their allies imposed export controls on more than 1,000 Russian entities, including the United Engine Corporation, UEC. These measures cut off access to critical inputs such as microelectronics, high-precision machine tools, and advanced forged components required for turbine blades. Almost overnight, Moscow lost access to an estimated 70% of imported components used in its aircraft engine industry. Existing weaknesses were suddenly exposed. Long-standing issues brain-drain aging Soviet-era production equipment and fragmented supply chains were no longer manageable inconveniences but systemic threats. Civil aviation suffered immediate consequences. Large portions of Russia's leased Boeing and Airbus fleets were grounded due to the lack of spare parts. At the same time, military demand surged. Transport aircraft such as the IL-76 and IL-96 became essential for sustaining logistics related to the war in Ukraine, sharply increasing pressure on domestic engine production. In September 20, 22, President Vladimir Putin publicly set the tone for the new reality. In the defense industry, he declared we must implement full import substitution 100% and without lowering quality. This was more than rhetoric. It marked a decisive shift from gradual adaptation to enforced technological sovereignty. To support this shift funding for what many analysts describe as a war-driven economy expanded rapidly. 
Moscow's defense budget increased by roughly 70%, reaching nearly $100 billion by 2025. Billions of dollars were channeled into UEC through state mechanisms involving the Ministry of Industry and other agencies. On paper, this spending stimulated growth. In practice, it also fueled inflation and structural distortions as production struggled to keep pace with political expectations, an example of what economists describe as a positive output gap. Facing persistent bottlenecks, Moscow pursued parallel strategies. These included parallel imports routed through countries such as Turkey, the UAE, and Kazakhstan, indirect cooperation with China in areas like drones and semiconductors, and limited exchanges with Iran and North Korea primarily in missile-related domains rather than aircraft engines. Yet these measures were at best stopgap solutions. They could not close the technological gap left by the loss of Western supply chains, nor could they fully offset the accelerating loss of skilled engineers. The gap between ambition and reality became increasingly visible. By 2025, production of the PD-14 Russia's flagship domestically developed civil turbofan remained stuck at roughly 20 engines per year, far below official targets. This shortfall underscored the limits of import substitution when confronted with complex high-precision manufacturing. It is within this tension between geopolitical pressure and industrial constraint that PD-26 emerges. More than a technical program, it represents a strategic gamble, a scaled, pragmatic attempt to preserve the Kremlin's ability to produce high-thrust aircraft engines under conditions of isolation. Whether it succeeds or not will reveal far more than the fate of a single engine. It will test the limits of Russia's technological resilience in a world where access, not ambition, has become the defining currency of aerospace power. So what PD-26 really represent? The PD-26 is more than just a new aircraft engine. In many ways, it is a microcosm of Russia's broader geopolitical transformation, an embodiment of what analysts increasingly describe as a fortress economy forged under isolation. While it may appear to be a purely industrial project, its implications stretch far beyond aviation, touching geopolitics, economics, and military strategy all at once. Geopolitically, it stands in quiet defiance of the U.S.-led strategy of de-risking. By doubling down on technological sovereignty, Moscow is sending a deliberate signal to non-Western partners, particularly within the BRICS bloc, that advanced aerospace cooperation is still possible without Western approval. This logic mirrors the original rationale behind the CR-929 program, a joint hedge by Russia and China against the long-standing dominance of Boeing and Airbus. Even as that partnership faltered, the underlying ambition remains intact. Economically, the engine is intended to breathe life back into an aviation sector worth over $10 billion, an industry badly crippled by sanctions. Airlines like Aeroflot have seen their active fleets shrink dramatically, while maintenance bottlenecks and parts shortages persist. PD-26 fits into a far more ambitious goal, deploying more than 1,000 domestically produced aircraft by 2030 to sustain jobs, stabilize supply chains, and eventually revive exports. Militarily, the engine's dual-use design makes it particularly attractive. It aligns with urgent battlefield logistics needs, especially the demand for efficient heavy airlift. Projects such as the conceptual 100-ton Slan transport aircraft highlight Moscow's desire to compensate for losses in Ukraine and over the long term to field a domestic alternative to the N-124. Critics argue that PD-26 is little more than wartime symbolism, diverting scarce resources from consumer goods amid stubborn inflation. Supporters counter that it proves the opposite, that sanctions have become a catalyst rather than a choke point. In their view, PD-26 marks Russia's definitive pivot from integration to self-reliance, a path born of necessity sustained by ideology and pursued despite delays and uncertainty.